and this is the orange theme. I hope everybody watching, you've got to be wearing orange right now if you're watching. Well, this. well one person isn't. <laughs> you're talking about me i should just yeah. clarify sean when you said i'm going to be bringing in matthew steeples and jimmy savile um, that's just well, to be very can bring clear. in jimmy savile he's uh he's safely yeah. somewhere else probably yeah i want to be very clear that's not who i am and i do not um you know i i will fix it for you but that's about as far as it will go well i won't fix it for you actually but it was, it was a lovely idea for a tv show unfortunately that's spoiled now forever and then we've got norman baker coming up next to talk about the royal family so for those of you who are not familiar with matthew matthew can you just tell the viewers a little bit about you and the steeples times um i write about uh, all sorts of different things uh mostly a person whose name i guess I cannot mention. Uh, her initials are G and M. Um, that's all I shall say about that. And I write about lots of different other matters. But I did participate in your fantastic program the other day. Yes, and we're both going to be participating in Crime Con. Not all three of us are going to be at Crime Con. 2022 aren't we coming up next month yeah and if the viewers uh, are gonna any of you want to come and meet us at crime com uh if you go to their website and put in atwood as a discount code you i think you get 10 percent off the ticket price so we look forward to meeting some of you there and um uh, matthew so you know what what i really appreciate the article you wrote about the jimmy savile documentary untouchable what kind of feedback have you been getting from it in your circle? Well, um, the most interesting thing about this is that um, people from America have written to me who are much younger, who've never heard of Jimmy Savile. And that is quite fascinating. You know, it's reached a new generation in the same way that the Menendez case has now touched a new generation. Um, Netflix and programs like yours take it to a new audience this is a case that you know it was over 10 years ago really because he was dead 10 years ago but a program like that takes it to a new audience and i think that's a very interesting demographic and how the media has changed matthew why, why is it important to to bring this to new demographics because the, the, there are new cases such as the Tim Westwood, the DJ, who is now being accused of doing similar things. Um, you know, it, it, it is still a relevant story that these people got away with what they did. And if we don't shine the light, then they're going to continue to get away with it. Absolutely. What do you think Netflix could have gone in harder with, Matthew? Netflix could have gone harder on the, the necrophilia, I think. It wasn't mentioned, was it? No. Well, for, I think what he did, you know, Edwina Curry allowing him the keys to the mortuary. Um, oh. Everybody's really been a little bit excusory of, of her behaviour. I, I, I have met Edwina Curry. I know her daughter. Um, M M Mrs Curry is all too convenient to forget her role in this story. And uh, I think it's time that all these kind of people were called out. Everyone talks about Margaret Thatcher. They talk about Prince Charles, talk about the people who actually really allowed her to, to him to do what he did. Is that alleged about Edwina Curry or is that fact? Edwina Curry um, helped him gain access to facilities, yes. Did she play a role in him gaining access to Broadmoor? Yes. 100%. Okay. And you know he had access to these facilities then mental patients and corpses are the people corroborating that he did actually engage in this nefarious activity with uh, corpses well i can't i can't confirm i don't know I, I i wasn't present so i you know we don't know that but but there's plenty of people who've said he did and there are plenty who said he did other things like for example um, when I wrote about the person who bought his um, Range Rover and his Rolls Royce, which they plan to use for children's parties, they they said to me, um, 
you know, we're going to have to burn these damn things because the, the 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 things that have gone on in the back of the, 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 the he used to have double beds in the back of the Range Rover and the Fiesta Ford Fiesta van. He he's a he he really had some very sick things going on in his life. Because we know what. Oh, sorry, Andrew, gone. Well, I was just going to say it's an issue, I guess, with journalists and stuff. We, we know that when somebody is dead, obviously defamation uh, isn't a thing. So you, that thing about the dead people, I, I wonder if that's why Netflix didn't go. Because cause we're always saying, oh, some, we know a lot of people have said it, but obviously we can but, really but improve your it. Your programme, Sean, you had Christopher Barry D talking about that. He he is a very respected journalist. You know, he he talked about that. OK, um, the... Um, the the journalist i forget his name he was going to be on channel five tonight with his big program at nine o'clock um he he doesn't believe in that but uh, i think jimmy savile didn't care whether it was living dead or otherwise he really was wow. into anything hmm. from what i gather yes yeah, so you're referring to christopher berry d who yes is the biggest biggest true crime author in the world Precisely. and he he said on your program about the necrophilia he was very specific about it i did i did listen in detail so you know i will say he he was specific i i think plenty of other people have been um uh mark william thomas uh says he doesn't know whether that's true or not but well there we so are what was really sad then when we were doing the research for the documentary was the testimonies of nurses, for example, at facilities that Savile was working at. And if a patient would come to them, you know, they, they were told just to hush it up. If a patient complained that Jimmy had done something, they were told to hush it up. And then you've got victims saying that, you know, I did report this to a nurse and the nurse said, well, that's that's Jimmy. You know, you, 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 we, we can't do anything about it. You best not tell anybody. So that's really sad, isn't it? Well, I think the, 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 your, your two victims who came on, the man and the woman, they both said the same thing. You know, they talked about the poor lady who committed suicide. And, um, you know, he, 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 he threatened anybody who got in his way. He, he knew how to handle idiot victims as he saw them. He, refer, he, he referred to these people as stupid. Is that not a bit harsh? Well, it, it's very harsh on them, yes. But that's treated these people. He was a bully, but he knew how to manipulate people. Like when he got in the car with Louis Ferrou when he drove to Scotland and he was asked a question. And the question was, Jimmy, people say things about you. And he said, they can say whatever they want, but I'll take them all down with me and I'll destroy them all on the way. He knew how to manipulate the system. Do you see that through one, Sean? That's, it's just the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. It's hard to um, get to access the first one now, isn't it? You can watch the apology one. Oh. But I think the first one's been uh, dis disappeared off the internet. I, I've got a video of it somewhere. I'll show you one day. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. Oh, good. Just, yeah, just watch I, I, knew, I knew all about his program about um, Neil and Christine Hamilton, you see, because I knew them quite well. So. Oh, right. That was around the same so time. That was how it? I got interested in Louis Ferrou. It wasn't because of Jimmy Savile. I, I I, was involved with Neil and Christine Hamilton back long, mm. long ago. So, mm. Mr. Ferrou was, you know, he, he, he actually was very clever. And in that car journey to Scotland, he quizzed him. And that man said, if you threaten me, I'll take you all down. We didn't say that to Louis. Yes, he did. He said he he answered the question. He answered his question. He said, "Anybody who accuses me of doing anything, I'll take you all down." He said a lot of weird stuff in that. It's a weird little car. In that car journey, journey you look up the quote. You know, there it is. Yeah. Mm. I've quoted mm. this well, yeah. quote repeatedly over the years. And... Oh right, I just remember. I remember the bit before because he's he's saying Louis says, "Why is it you say you hate children?" And he he said. Well, well, it's you know easier to say you hate them, isn't it? If people, people, well, you know, and Louis says, but it's even more suspicious when you start saying you hate children, and he just, sort of, I guess, he then says what you've just quoted, Matthew. So it was, it's a really awkward uh, little scene, that, isn't it? 
The, the worst scene in my mind was when he showed up with his fishnet vest. Oh, well, he had many that... different weird outfits, that's for sure. And they were all sold at auction, and some stupid people bought them. I think most of them ended up on a bonfire, a bit like Rolf Harris's paintings, to be honest. So, Matthew, you've talked about how he had control of politics, royalty, you know, he had connections at the top of every section of the establishment and government and royalty. Would you say that the foundation of his protection, of his insulation from incarceration, was his Friday lunch club with the police? Well, I think that was a central part of it. Um, you know, he he had his local protection, which was obviously very important because he lived there. And obviously he did things there. And Ray Tanet, his driver, who was died in prison, another paedophile and monster, um, aided him in that. Um, uh, but he obviously had other people, but he had politicians ranging from Edward Heath to, you know, Edwina Curry to all sorts of people helping him. Um, he conned the royal family. He conned a lot of people. He he was a very able person when it came, come, came to manipulating people. Um, and I suppose we lived in a different age then, you know, before the internet, then Google and, you know, that poor lady that you had on the program, Untouchable, um, you know, where did she have to turn to? Where did her friend have to turn to? Because nobody listened to them. Because everybody said, this is Jimmy Savile, leave him alone. The BBC, you know, the, but the, the culture at the BBC, you know, we still see is not quite fixed because... This Tim Westwood case, again, shows it in a different age, in the woke era. Um, you know, look what's happened to these poor women that he supposedly attacked, if that is true. Um, so the BBC haven't learned their lesson. Hmm. Are we, is it, I mean, you touched on it being a different era and all of that. Um, and I think, does that get forgotten sometimes? And not in any sense excusing him, but if anything, criticising the culture of yesteryear. Because the amount of like musicians and stuff who were at it, and I've made the mistake of sort of saying names before, and obviously it's all allegedly, so I won't do that now before Sean gets into a panic. But, you know, some of the biggest, most famous rock stars in the world are known to have been involved with 13, 14 year old girls. One in particular wrote a song about it and blast, blasted it all over the radio. I'm talking about an American singer. I mean, it's, it was a strange time, wasn't it, almost? Well, people people, people have different standards depending on who they are. But, um, but at the end of the day, abuse is abuse. Yeah. yeah. I, so I just, I just want to congratulate you both on that documentary, by the way. It's absolutely fantastic. And Sean, you, you end with a, such a powerful moment to camera. What did it mean to you to, to, to make this film? How, and how long was it in the making? So it took four years approximately to make it. And a huge credit to James of Underground Films for oh. structuring, it, structuring it so well. I thought, you know, I didn't realize how powerful the structure was till I actually watched it. Yeah. Um, during the premiere, uh, my parents said they were gripped, you know, they watched the whole thing. And we've had so many comments come in from people just saying that, you know, usually I, I tune in for this, tune in for that. But this, you know, I, I, I put all that time aside to watch the whole thing. So it's, it's great. Um, the, the, you know, the survivors should not be forgotten. There was a lot of focus on Savile in all these documentaries. The BBC one's coming out soon as well. And I thought it was well, can, I, can I interrupt you and say, you know, in any situation, it's always the victim who should be remembered first rather than the perpetrator. We always talk about the criminal before the, before the victim, and the victim is so important. That's why we were honoured to have on exclusively Kelly Gold, yep. who was a, a former Top of the Pops dancer yes. and, and friend of Claire McAlpine, who should and the be remembered. As well, who was from Liverpool. Yes, Stephen French. So Claire McAlpine kept a diary of what had happened to her and it wasn't just Savile, there was a world famous singer, there was a famous DJ, 
Uh, she feared that she was pregnant. She put this in a diary. Her mum found it. And when the, when the mum approached the BBC, the BBC denied anything like that had possibly happened. She was a fantasist. So then the mum turned to the Met Police, who lost the diary. So that is an absolute abomination that not only was this person, you know, the mum not listened to, but Machiavellian manoeuvres were made so that that diary would disappear into the Bermuda Triangle. That, that's, yeah, that's a travesty of justice right there. So I think Netflix and the BBC should, ra should help raise these kinds of stories as, as well as, you know, focusing on the general mainstream media story. That, that's what was important to me, to, to go deeper and to expose things and to try and, you know, keep, keep the memories of people like Claire McAlpine living on. She was only 15 at the time. Did he? Does are there any rumours or, or talk of, of him passing on any you know offspring? Is there anything like that? I don't know about that. What do you? What have you heard anything, Matthew? Um, well, there were allegedly incidents when people became pregnant, but he always denied it. So it is. I mean, so I don't know about the possibility, isn't it? Whether there were ever any DNA tests or anything, probably unlikely. He probably just bullied them into shutting up. Um, yeah. Did you um, ever come across him, Matthew? I never personally met the man, no. No. Mm. Sean? I was very lucky on that record. <laughs> um, when I, when I, I was a kid? A when I was a child who wanted to go on Jim will fix it <laughs> to me, and um, I think uh, I think that this child did go on the program and they wanted to meet this creature called the Samphire that you know the, the from the BBC series I can't remember what it was called the the thing that dug into the sand and they did manage to go on it so but I don't I it was, I was a, a child that lived in the same village as me or something so <laughs> that's the end that's the close I never ever I, I always found him a bit creepy but I think most people did. As a kid, I was never inclined towards his show either. I was more of a Tiz was. I, I preferred Tiz was than the, than the BBC I like to, stuff. I like, like listening like... to Just William as I did on Radio 4 this morning. You know? <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer something a bit more innocent, to be honest. These are, these are not, not only very British references that few people are going to understand, <laughs> but they're also Stone Age references. But it is oh, we're Stone to speak Age, to... are we? So you're the youngster here. <laughs> I am. Of course I am. I'm a generation younger than you, I, I hope or believe, but than both of you guys. But it's good to be able to talk to you guys about, you know, the, 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 old, the old world and the way it was. I should just say, I've just done a little research here. Um, Jimmy Savile never had children. However, in 2015, the Mirror reported a 29-year-old woman claimed she may be Savile's daughter after her mother, Georgina Martin, previously said, I have carried the terrible secret that my child is likely to belong to Jimmy Savile for three decades. Well, she wouldn't have inherited very much because uh, most of it got taken by uh, the, uh, the litigators and uh, the victims. So, um, and the penthouse got pulled down in Leeds, which uh, it's uh, the Did building it? is still there, but you know, the, his his apartment no longer. What about Savile's connection to the Yorkshire Ripper Peter Sutcliffe prior to the? Um, incarceration of Sutcliffe and then a Broadmoor. Well, it was like an ongoing thing, wasn't it? Well, maybe there was some connection, but maybe not, because as many of your guests said on the programme, you know, he was a bit of a lone operator and he did his own thing. He liked to do things in the back of his, you know, Range Rover and his Ford Fiesta van. Um, mm. Whether he would have wanted to have joined in with somebody else who was equally power crazy is another matter, but who knows? It's possible. But yeah. after his incarceration, um, Jack, the the, the, um, the Yorkshire Ripper, um, Savile did introduce him to Frank Bruno. Do you think that Savile was just drawn to killers and sickos? Um, I think Savile liked to have anybody as long as they were just, they had a tension around them because he'd like to show off to them to show he was more important than them in his mind, I would think. I would think he would have 
been on an ego trip to say, I'm bigger than you. Mm. It's interesting what Sean's saying, because there's that clip, isn't there, with him with Gary Glitter, and they all they almost seem to be winking at each other on TV. Do you know what I mean? And it is an interesting thought, uh, a disgusting one too, of, of the two of them and other people like them sitting around and maybe off camera, you know, gloating to one another about, you know, what they've done. They are... They are all very, very sick people, but you know, I, I don't know that much about them. I know more about Rolf Harris and Max Clifford and other people of that type. Um, and you know, they they all have the same attention demand that they want to be they want to be the big character. So with Clifford being dead, then we, you know, and Savile's dead, it, it, we it, we can't get done for defamation or cyberbullying. So what is what was Max Clifford's role in that whole era of cover-ups and Max and Clifford? It, Max Clifford was very good at one thing. He would say to a newspaper, "You don't upset my client. I will give you this story instead." So I trade you. You have this, and you shut up about that. And that's how he worked. That's how he worked for people like the man who ran um, Blackpool Football Club, of course, Orange. <laughs> the, the, the Owen Oyston. He he represented him. He worked. He had on his board of directors Stuart Hall. You know these people uh, all were. And the protection of each other was very key to their agenda. How did how did Clifford maintain that for so long, and what was what caused his downfall? Um, he got too he got too arrogant in the end. He just he just couldn't stop himself. He thought he was God. And like, you know, he flew too close to the sun. If you want to make a comparison of that nature, he, Icarus. Yeah, he, did you see, really, did you see that? Did you see that clip, Andrew, where Max Clifford comes up behind the TV presenter who's outside the, the court courthouse case, yes. and starts imitating the TV presenter behind the camera? Yeah. Have yeah, you seen yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, Crazy, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's so weird. Really, really creepy. Well, I, I had I threat, oh, go on. I had threats from Max Clifford's daughter after his death. You know, the the the, the, the Cliffords are a very arrogant family. I exposed the fact that she she recreated his very own website. She thought she could just carry on as him. I, there's a, a funny, uh, sort of funny Max Clifford anecdote I've got, because I interviewed a guy on my podcast um, called Chris Atkins recently. And Chris is a journalist documentary maker who exposed um, Max Clifford and was a big part in getting him put in prison. But Chris um, also was done for tax fraud. And then he got put in prison for two and a half years. And when he walked in, he saw Max Clifford there. And he sort of comes in and Max Clifford says to him, you know, oh, God, you've come to rub it in or something like that. And he's like, no, no, I'm living down the hall now. And it's sort of had a little chat and all that. Wow. That's bizarre. <laughs> but, so funny. but Max Clifford, um, when he died, everybody said, how on earth did he have a, a, a luxury bed in prison? He had a bed better than anybody else. He had a, uh, he had a mattress brought in specially. He, he got special privileges to the end. Because he still was controlling people even then. So he was. He was go on, Sean. So, so um, Matthew, you're being asked about another a character from the media from that era, and that is Jill Dando. What are your thoughts on Jill Dando's death? Um, what, what she well, was I never, I never knew Jill Dando. Um, I had a a um, situation of my own in my relations um we had a lady who i won't name today but we'll talk about it another time who was shot in a similar way in west london at around the same time and she was killed with a crossbow on her doorstep um i won't talk about that tonight but but um jill dando did probably know rather a lot about savile and she I, I don't believe her death was linked to Savile, but it's a possibility. Wow, that's a brave, a bold thing to say. Um, but 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 my 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 relative F was very very similar. 
in West London, and I think there's more likely, but we'll talk about that another time. Agree. I, I never even knew. I mean, I was only, again, not to go on about the generation gap, but I was only eight years old when Jill Dando was shot. Um, was it outside her house, I think? Um, but even, I still remember that because it was just such a big, crazy, unexpected thing. I never knew there might be a pot potential link to, uh, you know, people knowing too much about Savile and that kind of thing. Um, well, it was regularly mentioned, but her, she was, she was also connected with things in Yugoslavia at the time, and um, and there were other matters because she was a crime watch presenter. No, of course. Mm. Very sad. And she was a lovely lady, and I think it's terrible how she died. And you know, and, and her her fiance, you know, he's never been, you know, he's been exonerated and all of this and. You know, no, no justice for her death, and that's very sad. Yeah, and if, and if people want to watch more about Matthew's thoughts on Rolf Harris, we've got a clip out on the channel. It's got almost 100K views. And the clip starts with actual footage of Rolf and Jimmy, and it's, oh. oh. Disgusting. Disgusting. And when he, but his most recent episode of when he went to visit the school and he started waving at the children is, is equally appalling. You know the man is the man has no shame, and I've met Rolf Harris on a number of occasions. And frankly, everyone I know who owns his paint, who owned his paintings, have burnt the damn things. Because frankly, who'd want them? Um, I found there's, the there's... wife. I found the wife more worrying, actually, in many ways. She's very, very strange. And the daughter, she changed her tune as she went along in the story. Bindi Nichols. Um, Bindi is somebody I have um, not much respect for. Right, bloody hell. And all when Hughes equally. It's interesting because obviously there's two types of these these people who, you know, uh, molest children. And there's a sort of psychopath, which we, which we would imagine Jimmy Savile is. And then you've got a type who maybe is not a psychopath, perhaps, but maybe they are battling with their demons and they decide to do it anyway. It's still unforgivable, unforgivable, but different kinds. And so Rolf Harris seems, in, at least in... in I have I would have no idea. What do you think? Which kind is he a horrible, horrible acting psychopath, or is he sort of an unforgivable person who let himself, you know, do what he wanted to do, kind of thing? Um, Rolf Harris is just an arrogant man who thought he could do anything he wanted. Um, he did whatever he wanted in, in Australia, and uh, they got sick of him, so he came, he came, he came here, and mm. then he got caught, and he still thinks he can get away with it. You know, in prison, he. He wrote poems about these women and called them the woodworm women. Um, Bloody hell. And that's disgusting. And then when he got out, he went cr he went crawling around the outskirts of um, children's playgrounds. Uh, he doesn't seem to have any remorse for his activity. Um, you know, there he is living in um, Maidenhead and thinks he can carry on. But nobody wants to know him. But he continues to make a fortune from his royalties, just like Gary Glitter. They all continue to make money from their their, their past lives, and well, nobody can stop that because that's part of their existence. But um, it's just appalling to think of it. Before we bring Norman Baker in, then I am going to just do a quick survey of the viewers. Please put a one in the chat on whatever platform you are on. We've got them all collated here. If you have watched our Savile documentary, Untouchable. Put a two in the chat if you have not yet watched it. And put a three in the chat if it is on your to-do list. Just want to see what um, how it's going there with the... Yeah. Looks like a lot of people have watched it so far. While those are coming in, Matthew, do you want to tell the viewers where they can find you and support you and read the Steeple's Times? Um, well, they're very welcome to read the Steeple Times, the steeplestimes.com. Um, and they can follow me on Twitter, the, again, Steeple Times. So uh, that's the best place for it. And, and people can come and meet all three of us at CrimeCon 2022. Do you know the dates of that off the top of your head, Matthew? Um, well, I'll be there on the 12th of June, I believe, with you. Hmm. Couple of, Me whatever, too. Whatever, two or three days, I think, aren't we? No, I think it's only Sunday, two days. Saturday and Sunday. 
11th yeah, and 12th. So Saturday and Sunday, and then it's 11th and 12th of June. But the our little event is on 11 o'clock on the 12th of June. And if you do That's come you, to CrimeCon, uh, go to the CrimeCon website. And if you put in Atwood, A-T-T Wood, you will get a discount on the ticket price. Um, the people are asking, where is the Savile Dock? Presently, the Savile Dock is on YouTube. And also a version has just gone up on Rumble, a four minute, 21, uh, four hour, 21 minute version that's got some David I content at the end of it. <laughs> I'll just leave that at that. <laughs> are you, All right. Matthew, are, you, are you looking forward to meeting me at the thingy, at the CrimeCon? Matthew. Oh, well, most definitely, yes. I hope you'll be wearing something orange because uh, we both made the effort. <laughs> we all made the effort, mate. We've all made the effort. <laughs> you need a bit more. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna... an orange thing at the bottom of the screen, though, so at least you've done that. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to sh- we're gonna shave Andrew's back, Matthew, and then we're going to put a body-hugging lycra orange luminescent top on him for the duration uh, of CrimeCon. <laughs> gosh, it sounds, it sounds very criminal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for the super chat. Hang tight. It is appreciated. Whoops, scrolling that there. Where are we? Really appreciate the the, the uh, super chat from Hang Tight, and we are about to, to bring in Norman Baker, and we're gonna. I'll be seeing Matthew later this week. So cheers, my friend. Thank you for coming. Okay, on. I'll Thanks. see you on Friday. <laughs> cheers, for, Matthew. 